Hello everyone, another day, a beautiful day. Today we're gonna do an update on the S60R as I promised you guys in my previous video. And here it is. Boom. So since the last video, uh, we actually have sold the car to this guy right here, <laughs> my neighbor here. He wanted, he decided he wanted to purchase it, and once he purchased it, he started driving it. We noticed uh, that he had a PCV issue. Uh, he took off the cap, put a little rubber glove on it, um, and inflated when he was idling. So. We had to go, I uh, we went to IPD and we got the whole kit, the whole PCV kit with the hose, with everything, like with every single bit that you can replace in the PCV system we did. Uh, we took off the intake manifold, it's a pain in the butt uh, job to do, but you know, we we did it, it was, it took us a while, it took us probably around four hours, right? Yep, and the valves are all clean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we Shiny. definitely. We looked inside and when we took the intake manifold off, the, the in internals of the engine looked really clean, really nice. So we had to take everything off, literally. For, for the PCV system, you have to take the intake manifold off, um, the intake pipe, obvious, obviously, the intake. Uh, so pretty much everything that you see here in the front here, you had to take off. To do the PCV system, you have to take the whole intake manifold off uh, some instructions tell you to take off the thermostat housing we didn't do that there's a way where you don't have to take off that bolt on the intake manifold all the way out to get the intake manifold off there is pretty much uh, open open end it goes over the bolt pretty much the bottom slots on the intake manifold so you just untie loosen it up and you take the top ones out and the intake manifold comes out so we just loosened it and then for the gasket we just kind of sliced it and this uh, where the bolt goes where it goes over the around the bolt we sliced it on the open end and then put it over the bolt so we got around doing it without taking the power steering pump out and all the alternators so that was so that pcv system is good now we tested it so it runs great uh, with that go over some cosmetic changes that has been done to it since my last video update the trims that were faded away on in the sun over time were painted so they all look fresh on the car to be honest it looks a lot better on the car now and then also as you guys can see we plastic dip the wheels So the painting of the trims and the wheels, he, already, he did it himself pretty much well after he purchased the car. And then uh, we replaced the PCV system for him. Uh, and since there, he's just been driving it without any issues, right? Correct. Pretty much so. Gas mileage went up too. Yeah. How much have you drove since you bought it? 750 miles. <laughs> That's probably like in one week, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 700 miles i think we put about 200 miles since we bought it i had it for well, like two months almost and we put maybe barely 200 miles on it he got it in the first week he put like 700 miles on it so he's been driving it quite a bit now oh yeah and i forgot to mention one thing that he did literally the second day he got it he got the exhaust on there <laughs> straight pipe straight from the down pipe all the way back yep. just look at it Look at that. I need to readjust it because it's hanging pretty low, but yeah, it's hard because the drive line is so close to the exhaust. I wanted to give the drive line some space. Yeah. Because you can push the exhaust up with your hand. Yep. Like this. And if you get if it gets too close, then the drive line is not going to be happy. Yeah, so drive line. I kept it pretty low, but I think I might. I might have the exhaust shop put it back up a little bit more. Yeah, well, one more thing I forgot to mention. Yeah, he said that uh, these cars, I guess it's pretty common, maybe in, this, in the groups on Facebook or forums, that these cars actually have a problem where the resonator, resonator yeah, hits the drive shaft on top. So if you guys, you know, 
lift your car up definitely check your resonator if it doesn't hit your drive shaft because over time if it bounces off your drive shaft you're gonna have a lot of play on the in that so so yeah uh that's pretty common issue with these cars i guess i didn't know i found it out when after he got it after his buddy took the whole exhaust down and he saw there's markings literally bent uh, uh resonator uh, where it was hitting so yeah oh look yeah he brought it he he still has it so as you guys can see right there that's pretty much the thick part of the resonator too it's not like this well this is pretty thick this too. got dented yeah that's dented that well that probably not a drive from a hanger shaft. yeah but this right here as you guys see that's from the drive shaft where it was hitting yep and look at this nasty from i think that's from the turbo that was oil yep <laughs> burnt that all off down yeah so pretty much this car has been renovated all the way now <laughs> you got a new intake manifold gasket pcv system front brakes uh you got pretty much new turbo all gaskets you got water pump timing belt so pretty much it has a lot of stuff done to it now so all pretty much was like the front struts is like the only thing that you probably that, need that's it yep that i need but i yep. want to i want to tune eventually from hilton <laughs> yeah if i can Probably get a downpipe and intercooler. Yep, downpipe. Uh, intercooler and downpipe will probably be my first thing. I'm gonna leave the intake stock because even you said yourself that <coughs> the intake is kind of like a part that you don't really wanna yeah. mess with because the stock one is perfectly fine. Yeah, just maybe get like a K and N drop in the same exact yep. shape as the OEM one, but just a K and N one high flow and, and should be plenty. Not for... only that, but I'm screwing the sticker completely up. Yep. <laughs> he definitely messed this one up. He got a sticker from a local Volvo shop and he was trying to put it on. He ripped it all in pieces. Yep. Ouch. Oops. <laughs> Too bad. So sad. <laughs> so, yeah. So, this car is all his now and uh, he's just slowly making it look nicer, to be honest. <laughs> I didn't think there was anything nicer you can do, but he definitely painted those trims. It looks so much nicer. It's literally, just look at those trims. The black looks shiny as hell. And the wheels look nicer. All right, so he wants to do a wiper delete. I'm gonna let him do that right here. Well, most likely because the other one is missing. <laughs> yeah, the guys that we bought it from, they ripped off the bumper and they, they said they put it in the trunk, but I guess they never they did. They put the bumper on. Yeah. The other side has like three screws in it. Yeah, they had screws on it. I took them out, you know, put it on properly how it should have been. And the wiper is missing, so we're gonna do a wiper delete for Even now. Even though it's kind of a cool feature, I don't have a lot of snow here. Yeah. We don't go up to the mountains much. Yeah, and it's to be honest, these are glass. So I don't know yeah, why you need glass. that. Like modern cars, now they get all fogged up. You know, they don't bunch of fog on them. They get all nasty looking. But these ones, they they tend to stay nice. I Man, this. Look at these yeah. headlights, and look at mine. Just to compare, watch that. Look at that. That's horrible. Look at that quality. I'm gonna need to buff that. Just get it closer to look so you guys can see. Look at that. That's nasty looking. Compared to this, this looks really nice. This is what, like, 15 year old car almost? Yeah, now. 2004. 2004. Wow. So, so wipers yeah, off. That's off. So, I'm gonna just delete it. I'm gonna keep it just in case. So, we're gonna take you guys on a tour inside the car, how it sounds, and how it drives now, I guess. It sounds really nice. I drove it actually with the exhaust. It sounds so nice. We're gonna take it easy in the neighborhood once we hit the street. It's go time! Yep. <laughs> it's gonna just rap, 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 rap. Yep, it gives these little uh, popple, um, like popcorn crackle noises if you like let go, like you can hear. It's just probably in lower gear, does it? Yeah, you can hear them. It's pretty good. Yeah, it sounds really nice. All right, I'm gonna give it some gas, put it in advanced. Woo, <laughs> that sounds good. Oh, wow. That sounds good. Wow. 
sounds really good, especially um, in the city because it echoes off of buildings and cars. But if you're driving on the highway, just keep it at a good RPM because there's kind of a bit of a drone from the straight pipe. Uh, I've had Subarus that have bad drone, so I'm okay with it. <laughs> uh, so this one's better or is it the same as the... Su well, the inline five is different from a Subaru rumble. I feel like the rumble of a Subaru is there even if you have the nicest exhaust you could put on it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of inevitable. This one's not so bad. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's it's worse if you're in lower RPMs as opposed to higher RPMs, of course. But um, personally, I like it. It sounds good. It's different. It doesn't sound like a lot of cars on the street. So when I'm giving it gas or if I'm... Uh, like if you go by these cars right here, like this person doesn't know what they're doing, but. You can hear it echo pretty good. So most people don't know what the heck it is coming down the street. They're Sounds like, oh. like a Ferrari. Yeah, they're like, oh, it's a <laughs> Volvo. What the heck? That's not right. That's not correct. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, no, um, it sounds really nice. Dude. Yeah, and you know, especially when I park it at work, I'll have like, um, other European car enthusiasts, whether it's Volkswagen or Audi or mm -hmm. whoever, they they know the car, they see the car, they appreciate the car. Yeah. There's a guy who has an R32 Volkswagen, yeah. and he parks it next to my car every day, almost. Yeah. And I don't know him. He doesn't yeah. work at my work. He must work down the street, but yeah, he, he, parks, uh, next to he you. parks right next to me every day. Yeah. And I think it's because he understands, like, oh, okay, this guy kind of knows what he's driving yeah. and a lot of people they don't really know like oh they see a Volvo they think oh it's just a Volvo yeah. until you step on the gas and you can hear it yeah. or you can see you know these cars they're not race cars they're sports cars they're grand touring cars so they're gonna go as fast as you want them to go but um, yeah I came from Subaru so driving a Volvo is like totally different I feel safer for some reason <laughs> even though Subarus are supposedly very safe cars and comfortable too. and comfortable this car is very comfortable I mean I'm gonna drive to the coast tonight and that's gonna be the farthest distance uh, I've driven in a single setting so hopefully the seats hold up to their reputation because <laughs> yeah if your back hurts when you come my back, back hurts when I come back I'm gonna be a little disappointed but <laughs> yeah. there's not much you can do this guy asked me one time at the gas station did you get those seats from a Buick an Oldsmobile <laughs> no just got it that's how they came oh wow those things look comfortable they look yeah. puffy yep that's uh that's correct that's Volvo seats right that's there Volvo for, you, seats yeah. for you and then you get in Vossel's um, S60 GT and it looks like a race car <laughs> <laughs> yeah and look at the gas mileage it's Fif like 15.6 and that's on an 812 mile trip yeah so that's not bad I mean I filled up the tank and I think I had like 320 miles to empty and I'm at a half tank now and I got 180 miles to empty yeah nice. so so yeah, he went a couple, couple MPGs up. Once he I was at 13 even when I first got the car from you. Now yeah. I'm at 15.6 and I drive 25 miles every day to work. To and work. from work. So 13 miles round trip. Or 13 miles to, 13 miles from. So 13 miles each way, so. Yep. Yeah, that's a, that's a big drive. Big drive. <laughs> and the yeah. one thing I like about the R is the key. Yeah, look at that. That's the key. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. Other Volvos it just says Volvo or has the the Swedish logo. Yeah. But yeah, it's a pretty sweet, it's a pretty sweet car. It's totally different. I yeah. definitely like it. Man, this car I'm really gonna miss. Literally, I drove it maybe for what, two months, maybe put about 200, maybe 250 miles on it since we fixed it. Because I didn't drive it with the turbo because it was smoking so bad that I didn't want to ruin the car. And I didn't want to pollute the air to be honest. <laughs> it was so bad that he was like, I was worried for the people behind me. <laughs> So after we changed the turbo with all the seals, we started driving it. And yeah, man, this car is sweet. I mean, I, I like driving my car, but this is just something different about this car.
goes. Uh, we, when I started filming the video of the PCV system, actually doing a step by step, but it was probably like 6 p.m. at night, and it was just getting late, and we were we kind of needed it done. So I started filming it. Um, actually, I'll put that video in the, in I'll put that clip in this video. This is the ending of the video, but <laughs> I'll put it probably in the beginning. I'm not gonna complete that that video, but I'll show you a clip of what it was. I think we started taking the intake manifold off. That's about it, and then we kind of just stopped the video and just decided to just do it because we actually needed it done because he needed the car the next day to go to work. So we, we kind of just had to rush it. We had to rush, get all the parts from IPD, and then uh, we had to kind of rush to, to do the stuff, the job, you know, for him so he can drive the car. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, recommend my channel to your friends, and as always, see you next time.